Hi, I'm Rachel Romeliotis. I'm a senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I am here with Joshua Smith. He is a lead mobile developer for IRX Reminder. He speaks at the COCO conferences and is currently writing a book for us on core data. Let's see. What is core data? Let's start with that. So core data um, is a it's a persistence framework, but it's also an object graph management framework for Mac OS and iOS. When it was introduced, a lot of people sort of think of it as an ORM, as an object relational mapper, or as a, as a SQL data store, and it's not really that. It's probably the most succinct way to put it is that core data is a data structure manager. It allows you to create complex related data structures and manage them within your application in a simple and powerful way. So tell me, you know, what, give me a couple examples why you would use it. So the main reason why you'd use it is if you have a situation, let's say you have a store, a store application that sells something and you're managing inventory and you want to create objects that manage items in inventory and in their life cycle. So they're items that have been ordered and they're items that are on shelves and they're items that have been purchased. And you need to create objects to manage all this stuff in your Cocoa application. Well, you can use core data to say, I have an entity and that entity is an inventory item and an inventory item has certain attributes and you can encode that using the core data editor and then create relationships between entities and manage everything within this framework so that it's all clear, it's easily testable uh, and you also get persistence for free at, um, through the system because it'll save to disk, you don't have to. Um, persistence is sort of a side effect of core data. But the big thing is <clears throat> you don't have to go out and construct uh, NS object subclasses for all these objects and add all the parameter, add all the all the uh, members and all the everything. You just say, I have an entity, and the entity has a name, and the entity has all these other parameters, and it's related to these other entities. And Core Data handles all the stuff that you would have to write to manage that anyway. How about why would why would you choose a particular persistent storage? Okay, so. The persistence, uh, the persi NS persistent store is available in core data. There are several of them. Most people choose the default, which is, is sort of a default uh, in practice, which is the NS SQLite store, which is the fastest one, and it has certain advantages with regard to the fact that it survives reboots. Uh, it's pretty robust, but there are other stores. So let's say you had to manage a bunch of transient objects, and you wanted to access them very fast. Then you would use a memory store. Uh, basically, the rules the rules are if you need it to persist on disk, then you have to use one of the stores that persist on disk. There's an atomic store, an XML store, and a SQLite store. If you're dealing with large uh, large data models that have a lot of relationships, the SQLite store is probably the one that you want to use because it's quite performant. But if you have a relatively few relationships um, and even if you have relatively few items, sometimes the atomic store works out really well too because it's very simple um, and it's very fast. The memory store works great anytime you have to deal with objects that are not necessarily needing to be saved to disk or you need to do it very fast. The biggest thing about the persistent stores too is you don't have to use only one. You can create multiple models within your application and use the right store for the right set of tasks uh, whenever you have to do something. So I always hear that core data is very difficult to use. What, is, is this a piece of it, or is there something, or is it just in general really difficult? Core data, it, the problem with core data is it's really easy to use once you learn how to use it. So the core data editor is quite possibly one of the more, impo it's, it's not the most imposing editor within Xcode, but it's definitely high on the list. Uh, it's very poorly documented, too. The core data editor has all kinds of switches and buttons and things that, um, but when you're looking at the core data editor, it's very easy to get lost in the details. But if you, if you think about core data as a data structure manager, where you're just going to specify some entities and some relationships between the entities, core data is actually very easy to use. Um, so uh, it's, it's not very hard to use. Learning it, though, can be very difficult. And especially when you get into some of the more advanced options, it's even difficult to talk about because they're not only very abstract, but the way they're implemented within the core data editor means that I have to say things like, 
go to the uh, circle glyph with the little square on it and select the second option. And in there, there'll be two checkboxes. One that says, uh, you know, persistent store out of disk. You know, check that one. That's the one you want. You know, the, the core data system is very difficult to talk about. It's easy to use, but it's often very difficult to talk about because of the, the nomenclature. And it's very different. A lot of people prior to core data had been using SQLite. Other systems use standard object relational mappers um, that are really ORMs, uh, which core data really isn't an ORM, even though it kind of feels like it. And that creates a lot of cognitive dissonance for people. And so that contributes probably the bulk of the issues with, with it being difficult to understand. People look at it and they say, oh, it's an ORM. I know how to use that. And then it behaves very strangely. Well, because it's not an ORM, it's, a, it's a, basically a data store manager with persistence and a few other things. Um, so difficult to master, but once you have done that, really powerful. Extremely powerful. And very easy to get running in a very simple way. The, the templates that are provided that use core data can get you up and running very quickly. Uh, there are also a lot of other systems out there. There's Magical Record. There's uh, Mo Generator. There's, uh, there's a thing called Helios from Heroku that include a lot of things that sort of plaster over the sharp bits within the core data system and allow you to get up and running very quickly without having to delve too deeply into the internals until you need to. So tell me a little bit about how someone would handle concurrent and remote data. So concurrency within core data is all about the context, the NS Manage Object context. This, that's another example of what makes core data difficult to talk about. Some of the words there are really long. The NS managed object context is the arbiter of all the things that get committed to the store. So what you have to do is you have to create child stores and manage those, or you can use uh, GCD and serialize onto a single thread, but most of the time you should be using child stores and then percolate up into the parent. Um, one problem with that is that the, the the, uh, the rights are directional. So the child writes to the parent, but the parents don't necessarily automatically update the children. And so you have to pull in the changes manually. That can be somewhat problematic. But um, with the parent-child contexts, it can be very uh, much cleaner to handle, uh, to handle concurrency. Or, like I said, there's always GCD. You can serialize in the main thread. You can use, uh, or you can use an NS operation queue to make sure that all the all of your writes to the NS object NS manage object context occur within a single thread, um, but the parent child is is definitely the way to go. Um, so, I guess there's built in support in Xcode for core yes. data. There is built in. In fact, generally you're going to be doing everything with X everything with core data within Xcode within the core data editor. The okay. core data editor, uh, you create a manage object model. Uh, it, you create a managed object model within your project. Project, You click on that managed object model, and that brings up the core data editor. That allows you to specify entities, relationships. Uh, you can create uh, fetch results uh, and other things within that, within that model that are carried around within the model and are accessed through the NS managed object model. Um, and you get the context out of that too. But pretty much everything is in Xcode. And okay. it's all within that editor, including the generation of subclasses. How about core data validations? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Core data validations is another part of core data that's really super powerful. You can validate. So validations allow you to determine, allow you to control when an object is saved, when an object is deleted, when an object can be updated. You can specify validations on properties or on the entire object itself, or even on related data members in related objects. The biggest thing about validations is the support's built in. It uses KVO um, to how you specify it. And then with your validations, then you can basically guarantee that anything that gets saved into the persistent store conforms to whatever validity criteria that you have. Um, and that's, like I said, it's built in. It's very powerful. You can even use predicates to validate your data. And uh, you can make sure that things don't get saved when they shouldn't be. So one final question. It's a curveball. Uh, how, how do you, do you know anything about how Android deals with this sort of um, 
material? I do. So Android uses uh, a more traditional, I guess, for lack of a better term, uh, object relational system. It uses JDBC and SQL stores, or you can use POJOs too if, if you want and just serialize them to disk. But Android doesn't have the ability to specify uh, data structures the way that Core Data does. With, with Android, you basically have a SQL store, and you have to serialize and deserialize your objects into that however you see fit, and you, and you don't have a generic framework for managing those objects and their relationships. You have to do all the management yourself. Now, the SQL store can help you because you can specify foreign keys and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's, it's definitely a more, uh, a more SQL-based strategy than an object graph uh, that Core Data provides. Interesting. So that was all very fascinating and complex, and I want to thank you for talking to me about it. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thanks.